forest fires in Indonesia have resulted in a smoky haze blanketing the Southeast Asian region for months. Both the haze and the controversy around it have intensified in recent years. But what causes it and what makes it such a contentious issue? Every year, Indonesia sees agriculture fires in Rio province in East Sumatra, South Sumatra and parts of Kalimantan on Indonesian Benio. The fires are said to be caused by corporations as well as small-scale farmers who use the slash and burn method to clear vegetation for palm oil, pulp and paper plantations. However, the fires often spin out of control and spread into protected forested areas. The problem has accelerated in recent years as more land has been cleared for expanding plantations for the lucrative palm oil trade. A report released in December 2014 by the Environmental Investigation Agency entitled Permitting Crime, How Palm Oil Expansion Drives Illegal Logging in Indonesia revealed how a widespread culture of corruption and poor law enforcement is generating a flood of illicit timber as plantations surge into frontier forests. The report explains how almost all palm plantations nationwide are willfully evading Indonesia's timber legality verification system, a mandatory law implemented in September 2010 as a cornerstone of efforts to ensure only legal timber is produced in the country. In November 2014, newly inaugurated President Joko Widodo acknowledged the threat. The method to clear vegetation drastically dries the land making it more likely to catch fire the next time there are slash and burn clearings. Although the practice has been occurring for decades, an especially long dry season, caused in part by a strong El Nino effect, resulted in what scientists say were the worst fires and haze ever recorded. According to a study released on Monday by researchers from two United States universities, the forest fire and haze disaster in Southeast Asia last year may have led to the deaths of more than 100,000 people. The study, led by experts in public health and atmospheric modelling from Harvard and Columbia, estimated that 91,600 people in Indonesia, 6,500 in Malaysia and over 2,000 in Singapore may have died prematurely because of exposure to fine particle pollution from burning forests, in particular carbon-rich peatlands. Yet, the study states that it focused only on adults, so the number of children and infants who might have died or the pregnant women who might have had miscarriages remains unknown. The particles, known as PM2.5, because they are 2.5 micrometers in diameter or smaller, are also typical in diesel emissions, among other things. When inhaled, they can cause severe health problems, including asthma, bronchitis, lung cancer and cardiovascular disease. The Indonesian government said last year that only 19 people died as a result of the 2015 crisis. However, this year the Indonesian government has admitted that the haze has been blamed for deaths and respiratory illnesses in around 500,000 people. The blazes on the Indonesian island of Sumatra and on the Indonesian side of Bonia Island destroyed more than 10,000 square miles of forests, blanketed large parts of Southeast Asia in a toxic haze for weeks, sickened hundreds of thousands of people and caused as much as $30 billion in economic losses in Indonesia. Elsewhere, it has prompted school closures, flight cancellations and virtual shutdowns of towns and cities. Emissions of greenhouse gases from fires alone on the worst days were higher than daily emissions in the United States, which has a far bigger industrialised economy. Yet, civilians aren't the only ones severely affected. The forest fires have also destroyed much of the natural habitat of Indonesia's orangutans. Indonesia has been dumping millions of litres of water in affected areas and has sent in the army to help firefighters put out the fires. The country has also accepted help in the form of firefighting teams and military equipment from several countries including Russia and Singapore. But the affected country has for years promised to step up enforcement.
under President Joko Widodo, it has named 10 corporations as suspects this year and said it is investigating more than 100 individuals. But by the end of this September, Mr Widodo admitted that his country needed at least three years to tackle the haze, as it was, as he stated, not a problem that you can solve quickly. Indonesia has long struggled to police the vast rural expanse in Sumatra and Kalimantan. But Indonesian and environmental rights activists believe that it is not entirely to blame, as some of the corporations accused of illegal burning have Malaysian and Singaporean investors. Singapore in 2014 passed a set of laws that allows it to prosecute individuals and companies that contribute to the haze and has begun taking legal action against several firms. There have also been name and shame campaigns and calls to boycott the products of the companies said to be contributing to the haze. Adma Munu, Asia Wired. Now joining me from Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia, is Yuyun Indradi, Indonesia forest campaigner for Greenpeace. Do tweet us your thoughts on this discussion at AsiaWide using the hashtag Haze. Thank you for joining us, uh, Yuyun. Uh, firstly, all of the accused countries um, have denied the massive uh, numbers uh, presented by the study. Uh, is the study subject uh, to debate? Um, yes, definitely. And this um, study actually is an independent study done by uh, Harvard University. And yeah, <clears throat> this is a, a preliminary preliminary study. So there will be a, um, a it, and of course it will be uh, continuing with um, a further and deeper um, study on that uh, subject. But. Yeah, uh, I think it, it is it is good that this um, study has raised um, the debate in uh, in the three countries. And how has Greenpeace uh, reacted to the study um, do, in terms of your reaction? Yeah, um, definitely it is a wake up call uh, for uh, all of us here in uh, in the region, where. Um, Actually, it is um, very important to um, address the uh, root cause and how we can prevent uh, such a fire in a, in a, in a future and uh, in a collaborative way to prevent that um, happen again in the future. So again, um, how these uh, three countries, Singapore, Indonesia, and Malaysia, uh, work together um, to uh, prevent this um, happen again um, in the future. And w why did why do these um, annual forest fires happen? Um, of course, it's not sanctioned by the government, but why is there a trend uh, uh, annually? Yeah, uh, the most uh, the most reasons that um, usually um, used uh, by the perpetrators is uh, mostly just because um, this is the cheapest. Uh, way um, to clear uh, the land or to clear the forest after they lock out uh, the forest and um, burn uh, burning using the fire is uh, the cheapest way um, to uh, <coughs> make a clearing uh, and what, what did they use uh, uh, in terms of after clearing what did they use uh, these lands for yeah uh, basically um, with the uh, high demand on uh, palm oil in the uh, world market, it's uh, very um, attractive for um, palm oil company to expand their um, their business in 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 Indonesia and also uh, pulp and paper uh, with the um, acacia plantations. They also, um, I mean, uh, the supply and demand drive them to um, become more um, expansive in, in, in their way uh, or in their operations. So this is um, the thing that basically they want to get uh, more profit with the uh, uh, cheapest way um, for expansion. 
And uh, w what is the Indonesian government doing this, uh, doing to tackle uh, this, these illegal uh, forest clearings? Yeah, um, this is the uh, this is the thing. Um, the problem uh, with the government is that um, there's uh, also a serious um, issue of uh, corruption here in Indonesia, and it also. To, uh, such a situations uh, create uh, weak uh, law enforcement um, on the ground and how uh, they uh, enforce uh, the law to the uh, all illegal um, operations and, and, and in this case it's uh, uh, using fire. And uh, I know uh, Indonesia has got strong laws uh, against uh, people you know burning forests and yeah um, um, yeah but uh, so is there a case of uh, the Indonesian government not doing enough uh, in terms of enforcing the law uh, rather than the law laws itself definitely yeah I mean um, the law is already uh, exists and I think uh, what the government uh, need to do is enforce it um, firmly um, and I think um, that's the uh, Quite a fundamental problem that the government must must take uh, serious actions in the um, um, law enforcement, and it's not just the uh, actions of law enforcement, but also uh, building the capacity of the uh, law enforcer apparatus um, in, in in Indonesia. So, with the kind of um, um, seriousness, I think, um, yeah. It will, uh, the, the situation will be uh, a bit better. And how is the ordinary citizen uh, reacting to this? Because, uh, you know, having to live under a, you know, a atmosphere of haze uh, going about the daily activities, uh, how do they see and who do they, who do they blame? Yeah, um, yeah, basically, this is, um, um, it's been happened for the last uh, 20 years and it is, um, the, the, the people's basically is just uh, frustrated, um, angry, and um, it's sad. It's just a mixed feeling. Um, and um, they expect that the government uh, take uh, a serious uh, effort in preventing, not just putting out the fire, but also preventing the future fire. And, and uh, such actions is still uh, lack. <clears throat> and, I think um, this is also uh, part of the uh, government responsibility in fulfilling um, this uh, people's right in enjoying um, the healthy environment, as it is also stated in the in the constitution. So um, basically, um, the people are sort of tired, frustrated, angry, sad. It's yeah, it's a uh, it's mixed feeling, and they still expecting um, uh, the government um, to do better and better and uh, take a serious uh, measures uh, for this case. And also, uh, in terms of the effect to ecosystems, uh, we are, of course, hearing its effect on a, a range of, um, in terms of animals. Um, uh, what sort of effect is it having on what? Yeah, uh, definitely. I mean, uh, Basically, um, the the impact of this um, uh, forest fire uh, is not only uh, to the human um, in terms of uh, health or their livelihood or uh, their activities, but also to the uh, biodiversity. And in this case, um, you can yeah, just you just uh, you you can name it. Um, and but then in this, uh, the most obvious thing is that the increase of uh, Human versus wildlife conflict, it's, um, it's uh, increasing. And yeah, at the end, um, human will win, uh, of course. But then um, such a conflict will lead to this um, extinctions of this uh, endangered um, animal that are uh, now poorly protected. And what sort of animals um, are in, in danger of extinction? So, yeah, I can uh, mention here, in, um, for example, in Sumatra, uh, there's an elephant, 
um, Asian or Sumatran elephant, Sumatran tiger, and then um, orangutan. Uh, there's also uh, Sumatran rhino and uh, such a those big mammals are now the status is um, in danger and um, in the red list of uh, uh, wildlife uh, protection. And uh, the Indonesian president, uh, he has said that this is a, in terms of solving this problem, is a long-term project. Um, he, did, he, he put it for, as three years uh, that he will aim to eradicate this. Um, is he on the right track, um, according, to, according to Greenpeace? Um, yes, it is on the right track, but it's not enough. Um, early this year, uh, the president has established uh, a pit restoration agency where uh, the aim of this establishment is actually to um, restore um, the tropical pit land, which is um, it's a quite unique uh, ecosystem that most of uh, uh, east coast of Sumatra is um, full of this um, kind of uh, ecosystem. And such a um, uh, commitment to protect uh, this ecosystem is, um, we are very much appreciated. But again, um, it is not only, it's not only that, because um, there's still uh, a lot of um, remaining forest still unprotected. And there's also uh, still uh, serious effort in law enforcement needed. So yes, it is in the uh, right track, but again, um, a lot of uh, improvement need to be done um, in, uh, you know, to get the better um, protections, not only for the nature, but also for the human. Okay, thank you, Ewan Indradi from Greenpeace in Indonesia. Um, it's a pleasure having you. Now that brings us to the end of this week's edition of Asia Wide. Join us next week where we'll be looking again at the issues facing the world's largest Muslim community. Until then, join the conversation online and share your thoughts at our Twitter handle, at Asia Wide, or email us at the address below. Have a great week and see you in the next edition.